Hello again everyone and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera where today I've got another video for you Pintax fans out there. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about the Pintax KX 35mm SLR camera. For those of you who are new to my channel, I sell vintage Japanese cameras in my online store, japanvintagecamera.com and I have an Etsy store which is also called Japan Vintage Camera. So if you'd like to buy this Pintax KX or another vintage camera, please visit one of my stores. I'll post links to my stores in the description below the video. So, uh, the Pintax KX was released way back in 1975 and this was one of the cameras which uh, was released with the new uh, Pintax K-mount lenses. Uh, which was uh, the lens system which Pintax used to replace its old M42 lens system, which it had used for so many years. Uh, besides the KX, I believe there was a camera called the uh, KM and the K1000. Uh, there was a motor drive version, if I remember correctly, and maybe a couple of other models because uh, Pintax and other uh, manufacturers sometimes had to change the names of models uh, depending on which market they were sold in. But in this video we're going to be focusing on the basic everyday KX camera. So. Uh, the KX camera was kind of a bridge camera. It wasn't produced for very long, only a couple of years, because after that, uh, Pentax released its M series of cameras, cameras like the MX and ME and, and such, which were, uh, uh, well, the Pentax was a mechanical camera, but the other ones were uh, 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 electronically controlled cameras. Uh, the Pentax KX is a solid mechanical camera with a fully mechanical shutter. A little bit bigger than the M series, but a little bit smaller than cameras like the <clears throat> uh, Canon FT or FTB. A really good camera, and and this is a really good camera if you want kind of like the a more modern Pentax, but you like the really classic Pentax camera design, because Pentax brought over a lot of features from its first models, you know, the old Asahi Pentax and the old S series, and you can still see traces of those designs in this camera. So let's go ahead and take a look at the features, controls, and functions of the Pintax KX, and uh, starting at the top here. And what I mentioned that it uh, it has features uh, from the earlier cameras. The, the most notable ones are the the film rewind lever, uh, the shutter speed selector uh, knob, and this cap which covers the uh, film counter. These are pretty much well, almost identical to what you see on the earlier cameras, like the SP or SL or such. So, over here we have the film rewind lever and it's a beautiful anodized black color with this nice pop out lever and it's got a roller tip on it which makes it easy to uh, turn. Here we have the film speed adjusting dial and when you load your film in the camera you make a note of what film speed it is and then you set the number here in this window to match the film speed. To turn it you depress this little silver tab here with your finger. You should normally do this with two hands but doing it with one hand is fine and just turn it until the appropriate number lines up in the window. Over here we have this little black button and this is the battery check button. Uh, when you depress this button, if the batteries are good, the meter needle should swing down to the 1 60th uh, uh, number inside the viewfinder, the, the light meter uh, uh, readout on the right side. The 60 you can easily spot it has an X next to it. Uh, if the if the needle lines up with the 60 when you press this button, uh, the battery is good to go. Here we have the uh, flash shoe for mounting a uh, flash gun. Uh, you can use, uh, this is a hot shoe, so you can use pretty much uh, any modern flash on this camera. Just keep in mind when you're using a flash, you have to use the, the X sync speed button with 1 60th of a second. And you can just follow the directions on the flash if you're using a more modern, say Nikon or Canon or whatever flash. Over here we have the shutter speed selector. Uh, dial and this is a full range of speeds from B and one second all the way up to one one thousandth of a second. Here we have the shutter release button and it accepts a standard cable release and it has a locking ring around it. If you lock it that prevents it from accidentally firing when you touch it. Luckily it's a good design. It's kind of hard to accidentally fire uh, uh, the shutter on this camera but you can never be too careful. Uh, here we have the film counter window and as I said it's like the old classic Pintax design which is kind of aluminum uh, a cap with a glass window which is held on with screws. I really like the style of the old Pintax cameras and that's what really made them popular here in Japan. Uh, people just love the way they looked and that's one of the reasons that uh, so many people got them and why Pintax insisted on trying to keep some of the uh, design traits of the earlier cameras on it, it on their later models. And here we have the film winding and shutter charging lever and it has this really nice plastic 
tip on it which makes it easy to use. On the back here we have the viewfinder eyepiece. This is a nice large eyepiece. There's double tails on the side here so you can attach an eye cup to it or you can use uh, diopter lenses to adjust the viewfinder to match your eyesight. And I think I mentioned in my previous videos, you can also use the Olympus OM uh, diopters. They are the exact same size. So uh, you know, if you can't find the right one from Pintax, if you're hunting on AB or, uh, eBay or something, just look for one for the uh, OM cameras and it will work just fine. Uh, here we have the uh, card holder for mounting the film card. That's the, the top of a film box and that allows you to know what kind of film you have loaded in camera to remind you what kind of film. For people who always shoot the same kind of film, it's not important, but uh, if you have several cameras and you don't shoot them all regularly, sometimes it's a good idea to leave the card in there so you remember what kind of film you have loaded in it. Uh, coming to the bottom here, we have the release button for uh, releasing the film winding mechanism so you can rewind the film. We have a standard quarter inch tripod socket, and here we have the battery cap. Uh, this camera is very uh, convenient in that it uses modern LR44 or SR44 batteries. And that's a much a, a huge improvement over the earlier cameras, which use those tiny little uh, whatever it was they were batteries, which uh, they don't make anymore. And uh, yeah, one thing to keep in mind when you're using these cameras, uh, I got this camera with a lot of other cameras, and this one was sold uh, really cheap because. Uh, the light meter wasn't working in it and when I looked in the camera I discovered that the batteries were installed backwards and that's why the light meter wasn't working. Now for those of you who are troubleshooting old cameras, uh, the very first thing you want to check if the light meter isn't working is to make sure you have the battery in the right way. Uh, it happens all the time that people put the battery in backwards and I've done it myself on more than one occasion. Sometimes the battery check switch will work if the batteries are in backwards but the light meter won't work. This is like an issue on the old Electro 35s. It's very easy to put the battery in backwards on those. It's kind of like the way it goes and it's kind of counterintuitive. Uh, you press the check button, the battery seems fine but the light meter doesn't work. Uh, so you just have to check and make sure the polarity is right. Cameras usually have an indicator on the cap or inside the battery chamber showing which way the battery should be pointing. Many cameras, the positive end should be facing toward the battery cap, while in other cameras, it, turn, it faces the opposite way. So just look on the inside of the cap for the plus or minus, and make sure that the plus or minus end is touching the battery cap. Uh, just, just keep that in mind. It's such a, a common problem. Uh, I should have, I should mention this all the time, but. Uh, yeah, uh, that's why I got this camera cheap. The batteries were in backwards. I turned them around and the light meter worked perfectly well. Okay, moving to the front of the camera. Uh, this camera is fitted with a Pentax A uh, uh, came out lens. The ones which these uh, cameras came out with, I believe, was the, the Pentax M. And you can fit pretty much any of the M or A lenses. They all fit on this camera. And I even got uh, one of those old 35-70 to f2.8 zoom lenses, which was actually an autofocus lens on uh, Pentax's first autofocus 35mm camera. That particular lens also had the K mount, but with electronic contacts on it. That lens fits perfectly well on this camera. You just have to make sure that you uh, focus it manually and set everything manually. Over here we have the flash sync covers. I think I mentioned that earlier for when you're using a flash. Uh, we have a depth of field preview button. We have a self timer lever. And here we have the release button for releasing the lens. You simply depress that and turn the lens uh, leftwards. There are a couple of alignment marks here. There's a red dot on the lens where I'm moving my finger. There's another one here located on uh, the lens mount flange. Just line up these two marks when you're putting your lens on the camera. Turn it clockwise until it clicks into place and the, the camera is good to go. The light meter system in this camera is very simple and easy to use. There's a light meter readout on the right hand side and the needle moves up and down to suggest a shutter speed. So as you turn the aperture back and forth you will see the meter needle moving up and down and you should set your aperture to line up with the shutter speed which the camera recommends. Uh, one thing I recommend when using these cameras, though I said you could use LR44 batteries, I do recommend SR44 batteries. These are silver oxide batteries because uh, they are more consistent than the LR44 alkaline batteries. And uh, when they go dead, they tend to go dead all of a sudden. So the, the battery, the light meter will remain accurate until the battery is almost dead. Whereas with the LR44 battery, 
the battery will gradually lose voltage and that may affect the performance of the, the light meter as the, the voltage declines. And the last thing here we have is this little window in the front and this was a really good feature which uh, Pentax added to their cameras. This allows you to see the aperture while looking through the viewfinder, which was uh, not something which was a uh, uh, you, you could find on a lot of cameras in those days and this was uh, something which Pentax really uh, uh, made news about or uh, or sold as a, one of the wonderful features of these cameras. And it is a pretty good feature though of course you still have to uh, look on the top here when you are selecting the uh, shutter speed. The MX was uh, pretty cool and that you could actually see the shutter speed and the aperture through the viewfinder but this was a simpler and less expensive camera than the MX so you still have to look on the top in order to see the shutter speed. Now who's the Pentax KX camera good for? Uh, this camera is a very sturdy, reliable camera, which, though it uses batteries to power the light meter, uh, it doesn't require batteries to operate the shutter. So, um, uh, this is a, a good camera which you can use uh, in situations where you need uh, a really reliable backup camera. camera. Uh, I know people who've, ha who've gone to uh, interesting locations with their digital cameras only to find out that they, they can't charge their camera batteries or you know they don't have the voltage adapters or things like that to, to charge them up and they end up having to rely on a, a camera which uses conventional batteries, a film camera of some kind or a camera like this. Uh, this is a very good camera for someone who wants to learn the mechanics of photography because it, it offers the basic things you need, an aperture ring and a shutter speed ring and a very simple light meter. Uh, it, it's a suitable camera for uh, professional photographers uh, who want a, a really high quality, rugged and reliable film camera. And uh, for someone who wants to, uh, a good platform f with which supports a huge variety of lenses, because not only can you use the the Pentax M and A K mount lenses and uh, the autofocus lens which I previously mentioned, you can also use the M42 lenses if you use the Pentax K adapter, and that means that you can probably fit more lenses to Pentax cameras than just about anything else. Uh, Pentax made, of course, a large variety of M42 lenses in a lot of different uh, focal lengths and uh, Yashica made these, uh, other makers made them, so it, it's really cool to be able to use so many different lenses on this camera. But anyway, uh, my battery is getting low on my camera which I'm shooting the video with. Uh, that's one of the drawbacks to having a battery powered camera. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, end this video. Uh, if you like this video, uh, please click the like button, that helps. Uh, if you'd like to see more videos about more cameras, uh, please click the subscribe button. I'll be doing at least a couple more videos this week. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope you tune in again soon.